We're fighting a bunch of dorks. Look at they're in like skirts and like turtle hats. It's like the nerdiest guards you could hire. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we are playing a PlayStation One classic by Atlas. Or, you know, I say it's a PlayStation One classic. I should probably say it's actually a Super Famicom classic, and it's also a Sega Saturn classic. Of course, I'm talking about the Japanese turn based tactical RPG Tactics Ogre. Colon, let us cling together which I believe is a song reference, uh, which makes a lot more sense. If that was just a title that they had come up with, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. Uh, I'm totally ignoring this intro, actually. I haven't read a single word that it said. I've been talking to you guys. Tactics Ogre was originally developed in Japan for the Super Famicom. After it was a success there, they decided to bring it to North America, but they didn't do it on the Super Nintendo for whatever reason. They brought it on the first Sega Saturn and then the PlayStation. We are playing the PlayStation version today. And so we're going to hop into it and see what this game is all about. So even though this is on the PlayStation, before the game start the game... What? Who's... Who starts a game before the game even starts? I'm curious. I, I assume this is a cutscene. You know what? I'm going to go into it just to see what it is out of curiosity. Every game goes to start the game. How many games give you the option to go before the start? Welcome to the tutorial mode. Here I'll explain about the basic rules of battle. What would you like to know? Uh-oh. Uh, conditions to clear. If a unit dies, about game over. <laughs> Moving, attacking. Uh-oh. I did not realize this game was going to be that complicated to play. I don't have, you know, several days to learn this game. Forget about the tutorial. We're going to start the game, and we're going to wing it, guys, like we always do. And we always come out the other end pretty okay. So, we are the daughters of Falaha. Falaha, the lord of heaven and earth. Speak thy name. Never heard of Falaha. Didn't know uh, Falaha was that uh, that big a deal. Okay, type, type my name. Nope. <laughs> Denim, is that okay? No. How do I... I can switch that, but how do I actually insert a letter? I've never had trouble on a title screen inputting my name. Type. Am I? Is there supposed to be a keyboard attachment? Okay. My name is Denim, guys. Thou shalt write your day of birth. My middle name is Levi's. Uh, okay, here we go. Ah... Let's pick something good. Sun Thunder, Sea, Black, Twin. This is pretty interesting. Okay, that doesn't add anything. Light, fire. Interesting. So these things interact. Uh-oh, well, what month should we pick? Twin, Black, Sea, Dark, Gold. How about Thunder? Thunder's powerful. Where did Thunder go? God? Ugh, God's a little more powerful. No, I wanted Thunder. Where did that go? There it is. And that's that's a clear representation of thunder I tell you what uh, woman cheetah costume uh, wind goddess Helena what is thy prayer oh my god we got to pray for something how about revenge <laughs> wind goddess Helena what is thy offering uh, how about I give you love I'll give you love for some revenge it's a fair trade what is thy vow oh uh, hatred <laughs> We're giving you love, we want revenge, and we demand, we, we pray for hatred or whatever it was. What is thy prayer? Oh my god. Uh, glory. What is thy offering? I don't know. Hope? Hope is a good thing to offer. What is thy vow? I vow... All the good vows are taken. Do I, I just have to pick one? Can I pick revenge again? No. <laughs> Imagine you could pick the same one for all of them, so you could pray for revenge, you could offer revenge, and you could honor revenge. It will, will vow for honor, I guess. It's a good enough vow as any to make. Okay. What is that prayer? What? Why does it keep... Okay, I'm just going to pick them randomly. Offering... I want rain. I will give you peace. Sacrifice. Okay. Is this like a cheat code? Is this like the up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, select, start thing of the Contra code? I'm doing things in a horrible order. I don't even know what I'm agreeing to. 
This is not how you join a religion, guys. You do not just, like, pick options out of a multiple choice because all the good ones are taken and just hope it works out. Uh, who will you ask for protection? The first one, where I was talking about vengeance stuff. May path be glorified by our father. All right. One of the innovative things about this game, by the way, I should say, is it's a tactical RPG, but it was kind of heralded in its time for having um, a non-linear story. So essentially choices that you made in the game would affect the, the plot that occurred. And there were multiple endings in this game, which these days doesn't sound like a big deal. But back then, oh, that's cool. I like how it's uh, everything is made out of cubes. There's kind of a Minecraft-esque feel to the town, actually. Everything is a cube, and it constructs their isometric world. But multiple endings, you know, it wasn't a thing at one point. When people developed games, they had an end. There was a start, a middle, and an end. The idea of a branching storyline, and the, even the idea of like an intro cutscene like this, you know, not every game was doing that. So this game, you know, was influential. Guess what? The reason it's in this book, 1001 Games You Must Play Before You Die, and the reason I'm playing it for the series is because, hey, it was a bit of an influential game. Okay, so we're, oh, he just whipped a peasant. The whole city's burning. That girl is crying. What is happening here? Can we get to the game? No, we're, we're still watching this glorious intro. This guy's just having a, a lovely, peaceful meadow ride in his with his horse. Oh, he's whipping that peasant. He goes for the back attacks. That guy's big into the backstabs. He waits for you to... He makes peace with you. Waits for you to walk away. This guy's just watching. This is uh, the equivalent of TV back in the day. You notice the village was being pillaged and burned. You went to go watch it because you had nothing better to do. Just stand on a hill and watch it happen. It's like going to see an action movie these days. And he's going off hoping no one's going to slash him in the back as he wanders around town. So this is a PlayStation game, but as I say, it will have very Super Nintendo style graphics because it really came from the Super Famicom. Super Famicom was a Japanese version of the Super Nintendo, by the way. And this is Tactics Ogre. All right, here we go, finally. Denim, damn it. Lands is here. I like how my name is Denim. And I pray for revenge. Just as we had heard. Denim. Gotcha. Well, I guess this is it, sis. This isn't a very good idea. We can't possibly win. How are we supposed to be khakis? And capris. We're just Denim. What are you talking about? Kachua, isn't this what we've been waiting for? Oh, there's more. <laughs> but three of us against the Dark Knights. Don't worry, Kachua. They're not expecting us. You know, okay, I'm gonna start skipping this dialogue. This is this is what gamers actually do when there's too much dialogue in a game. And you know what's funny is the definition of too much dialogue is like three or four sentences is enough to just totally skip stuff. As gamers, we just want to get to the games. We don't want to necessarily read stuff. If I was really gonna play this game um, and give it a real playthrough uh, on my own, I probably would read at least a lot of this intro stuff. At least to get an idea of what's going on but as far as we're concerned you know we have a limited time with this game together guys i want to kind of get to some more of the gameplay element sure these cutscenes are part of the game but the real game is going to happen in the combat victory condition kill all the enemies oh okay that's easy game start go when the game starts the faster character is the earlier the character's movement will <laughs> move in turn will come the order of movement is called at, attack turn. Whichever character has at, has the at, the player can order that character to do what to do, i.e. move, attack, wait, etc. However, you cannot give any orders to enemy characters. Oh, you mean I can't control the enemy? What kind of bogus game is this? When you want to make an order to the character, press the O button, then you can get to the main. Okay, if you want to know the meaning of commands, put the cursor on the command icon and press the select button. The explanation will show up on the screen. So explanation is called a help message. Are they telling me how to get to the help messages? Are they show... Oh my god. <sighs> okay, here we go. We're gonna move this guy. Can we move him? Select the destination of the character. I don't know why I'm talking like this. It just feels right. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. Move him here. They'll never suspect it. Set the, <laughs> Set the designation. A direction can be changed by L1, R1, or directional buttons. Okay. Boom. That is the direction he will face. He'll perform an action now. 
he will do an indirect attack. Select a list to use. He will throw a stone. Select the target. The stone. It will go over here. It will hit no one. It will hit the roof. I don't know why he's doing this, but he's doing it. No, don't don't throw a stone. It's a big old waste. No, how did no get out of this? Okay. Alright. Now we have this guy. Okay, vice. Okay. Good job, buddy. And Oh, okay. So you now wait. This will end the attack turn of this character, yes. Okay. Oh, he's gonna attack him! He's gonna punch him in the face! This kind of reminds me a little bit of Fallout, the original Fallout. Knight, who are you? We are warriors of the Walston Liberation Army. We will avenge our people's suffering. Avenge? <laughs> He's so confused. What a polite way to welcome people. Look at them. They're just kids. Wait, are you sure you're talking to the right person? If your name is Lance, then you're our enemy. We don't like any Lances in our town. Indeed, my name is Lance. How did you know? Woo! Okay, we're gonna let these guys hash it out while you guys, well, well we all chat for a bit. So I suppose when, when they say that this game has a branching storyline, it really does have a branching storyline. There is a lot of story going on in this game. Too much for, uh, for us to really dive into today, I think. So, uh, you know, if you're just joining us uh, on, in these videos, you know, my name's Gaming J. I'm on a quest to... Oh, I, I forgave someone. I'm on a quest to play through the book 1001 Games Must Play Before You Die. And so every, you know, twice a week I release a video. And this is actually a game... Oh, we just made peace with the guys. What? I had one turn of combat, several pages of dialogue, and now we're having, like, a part... This is, like, one long cutscene. Okay. Um, what I was going to say is that this is one game that, like, I kind of had reservations about playing. In the sense of I was kind of worried about how this video would turn out. Because I'll be totally honest with you, the games that I feel like work best for these Let's Play videos are games where there's more action, there's more stuff going on. And I know with RPGs, you really have to get into them. You know, it's, it's hard to get too far in an RPG in about an hour or so, which is what I typically give each game. Sometimes I go a little longer if I feel like a game needs it, but I don't like to necessarily just go long for no reason or if I don't have to, if it's kind of getting boring. So I have some concerns about this game. We're going to see where it goes. I'm I'm aching to get to the point where I can actually do something in this game. I don't, I don't care who our enemies are, what the whole backstory is here. I just want to kill some people. But in the meantime, we can talk about tactics over itself so this is a larger series than just one game i believe this was might even have been something crazy like the seventh game in the series or or maybe it wasn't maybe the creator envisioned seven games this was the first whatever it is i know there are many other tactics ogre games um, in you know, sequels and prequels and so on interestingly i've read that they each are slightly different in emphasis this is a tactical turn-based rpg there are also larger strategy style games and so on. Uh, I think they're all RPGs, although don't quote me on that. But at least there's variety in like, is it a tactical RPG or not? Uh, it's interesting how you actually have to be that specific with RPGs. Wow, these guys are really going on. Oh, no, no. Let's see what they're saying, just very briefly. Let's check in with them. I'm being nice to them so that we can take advantage of them. Oh, shoot. She's manipulative. Maybe if you had half a brain, you'd have figured that out already. You should be thankful. A priestess taking advantage of people? What a bitch! Holy crap! I didn't realize I swore in this. It's hardcore. Oh, I just don't want to lose anyone. She's emotions, guys. She's doing what she's doing for the good of her people. She can't help it. When you want to move from one place to another, move the cursor to the place. You want to go and press X. Then you can move to the place. Is that literally an instruction? I couldn't have figured that out. Press the O button to save the game. Okay, if you want to know the meaning of commands... Oh my god. Okay, let's just go somewhere. Let's do something. The Emmerich entrance. Good enough. Fight it out. Did it just say words to me? Is it fight it out? Guys, are we going to get to see a fight scene now? 
we're fighting a bunch of dorks. Look at they're in like skirts and like turtle hats. It's like the nerdiest guards you could hire. You are the gorillas from Garate. You trying to rescue Ronway? Okay, guys. These kids have their uh, 200 goth, 2,000 goth. Kill them all. I am totally willing to fight some some nerds. Victory condition. Kill the leader. Oh, that's interesting. It's interesting how I don't have to kill everyone. I kind of dig that. I dig the idea that in these combat things, there's variety. All right, here we go. We're finally doing the tactics part of Tactics Ogre. If the river is one cube width, you can jump over it. Watch. So in the context of combat, where things have gotten really intense, we're supposed to kill someone. You, t you, you turn around and spend the time talking to your party about jumping over rivers. You're showing off that you can jump over a river in the middle of combat. Wing creature can move anywhere. Type of terrain. Okay. Thanks for these pro tips while we're fighting. Like, turn around. The guys behind you are the ones who are going to want to kill you. You have to work as a team. Yeah. I mean, be alert. Always check to see who will move next. Okay. <laughs> Is everyone going to shout, like, a little inspirational tip to me as they run off into combat? <laughs> In case you don't know, attacking your enemy will reduce his hit points. Ah, off the battle. <laughs> well, what's this guy going to say? Let me use the guardian element of your enemy you're about to face. Okay. If you fight with the opposite element like wind, yeah, blah, 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 give them good damage. Wow, okay, so there are lots of tactics going on here. So wind versus fire, or earth versus water, or whatever. I can dig that. I mean, it's called Tactics Ogre. You'd think that would matter. Jeez, you're giving this guy, you're just inundating him with details at the beginning of this fight. Are you sure you want to be doing this right now? I mean, technically I should be paying attention to all this, but first of all, I feel like it's information overload. I'm never going to be able to, uh, able to integrate like 12 different strategic suggestions into one battle. It's way too much info. You need to do this progressively, like each battle introduce a new idea, first of all. And second of all, I think I can win this battle even with my very peripheral knowledge of this specific game. Because, I don't know, I'm just cocky like that. I have a feeling that I've played enough RPGs in my time that I understand the basic mechanics of an RPG. You take turns moving, you get up close, and you fight. Okay. Okay. What am, what am I going to say before I, before I run away? Okay. Can I turn around? Uh, let's see. Uh, guys, remember to uh, face the enemy directly before you swing your sword, or you won't do any damage. Yeah! Now I run off. I thought that's what we're doing, right? We all have to think of something inspirational to say? Okay. Hidden treasure. Cure is discovered. It will be placed in your inventory. What? I think I just pickpocketed that out of the guy in front of me. I found a hidden treasure right there, right in the pocket of the guy in front of me. Okay, end my turn. She's going to come and fight. Those guys totally look like they're in dresses with turtle hats on. What's also interesting about this game is that I am not in control of most of these guys. I only control one guy in my entire party. That's another reason why I feel like this fight is going to go extremely well for us, because I'm not... It's, it's not all up to me. I'm just, like... A cog in the machine. There's many people who have to fight here. Youch! One experience! I think those guys in the turtle hats are totally in their pajamas. You know, Tactics Ogre is kind of a funky title. Because when you think about it, what the hell is a Tactics Ogre? Like, what does that statement even mean? Tactics Ogre. It's not like Ogre Tactics. Like, the tactics we are using are those that belong to Ogres. It's... Tactics Ogre, which kind of sounds like something like Soup Nazi, you know, like, oh, you're a big Tactics Ogre. And so what would that even mean? So tactics are like the little strategies you employ in combat, little maneuvers you do. And what would an ogre be? Like you're kind of big and thoughtless. So Tactics Ogre could mean someone who just kind of runs in foolheartedly and tries to beast mode their way through. Kind of actually... Because I think about it, a description of how I play strategy games, most of the time, most of the time. If I'm playing a strategy game that I know very well, like like back in the day I was really good at StarCraft, um, I, I was not a tactics ogre. The bag was empty. Hmm. 
Well, that's disappointing for him. Oh, you should not have attacked him, though. Literally, his attack not only did no damage, but in retribution, he was killed. That is like the most ineffective soldier ever. He's like, don't worry, I got this, guys. He's like, oh, he, no, he, he not only did I not get him. Yeah, he killed me. I'm, I'm dead now. I'm gonna take his card, a dexterity card. I think it was a Magic the Gathering card. It was like one of his favorite minions since mine now. I guess I'll just face this way. Dexterity card was picked up. Dex is three points up. Yay! Hey, did a little Legend of Zelda hold the thing above my head when I get it then. It looks like that guy over there has like a Xbox or something buzzing over his head. What is that supposed to represent? Oh, sorry. Sorry for holding up the team, guys. I'll go to wait so the rest of you can finish this fight. I'm just really a tourist on this. I have not attacked a single person. Oh, I forgot I have an indirect attack. Shoot, I should have shot an arrow or something. She is playing it coy. She's attacking and running away. That's okay, though. She's a, a tactics fairy, not an ogre. She's far more majestic with her tactics. Oh, shoot, do I get another turn? Yes. Okay. Let's, uh, let's kill this guy. I know we can kill the leader and we can, like, end it. But you know what? That's not how I, not how I roll. Ooh. Short attack. The character to be targeted. Do it. Yes. Sounds like I, like, slapped him in <laughs> with a box or something. That sound effect. Twelve experience! That dude is worth a lot of experience. I wonder if guys in RPGs know how much experience they're worth. 14 experience. Well, he's worth more. Like, I wonder... If somebody defeated you in combat, how many experience points do you think you would be worth? Do you think you'd be a lot or a little? It's kind of like a, a point of pride. Like, yo, man, I'm worth like 25 experience. People really want to get me. We got 1550 goth, which I think is their currency. They trade in uh, teenage angst in this game. They're like, yo, how much goth you got? Because I, uh, I want to buy a sheep. They're going for a lot of angst these days. Okay, everyone's going to go in. I mean, I kind of helped. I'm glad I got one swing in that fight, but I lit like, literally I could have... If I didn't fight, we still would have won that fight. So, I'm glad, I'm glad all my compatriots took the time to shout all those useful tips to me that did absolutely nothing. Okay, everyone's looking good. We can check in on everyone. Let's see who's in our group. Denim, which is me. Vice. Uh, Kachua, Lands, Warren, Gilda, Gildas, Mildane, Canopus. It looks good, man. Uh, sure. Oh, shoot. I don't know how to go on. Okay. Okay. No, get out of this. Ah, uh, there we go. Uh, what am I supposed to do here? Yes. The menus are not totally intuitive, although I feel like I'm kind of getting a hang, hang of it. Did it say it was God Day? On the on the overhead map there, very briefly? Someone rewind the video. Is it, did it say God Day? Ooh. What a disaster! Lord Nibis is on vacation! Okay guys, these scumbags killed Bapula. Don't underestimate them. We cannot allow them to take over Amurka Castle. Let's show them what we've got. All right, dorks. We just killed a bunch of you outside. You guys are gonna be no problem. Leader, kill the leader. Game start. All right, well, what uh, inspirational words are you guys gonna shout as you run off to combat this time? Oh, nothing. Oh, you're all business this time, huh? Nothing to say, eh? I don't understand how flying works. Somebody tell me something about... What does poison do? If I'm poisoned, what happens? Dude, don't just run away. Hey, do you want your cure back that I took out of your pocket? Nope. 
Nobody's even paying attention to me. I feel so in love this time around. Whew. So apparently one other thing... Ooh, what did, what did that guy do to that guy? He, uh... Oh, put him to sleep. That's what that bubble means. That is like the most ambiguous bubble to indicate sleep that I've ever seen in my life. Like, who would have thought... I mean, what's the universal indicator of sleep? Z's or Z's coming out of someone's head, right? Catch some Z's. Uh, that would be a good indicator, not just... What am I... Like, what is that? Weird. So I guess we're busting into this castle causing a big old ruckus. I do actually have to say that I kind of, you know, even though I've barely done much combat in this game at all, and it's actually at this stage pretty automated, I do like the idea of the combat. It is very rep reminiscent of Advanced Wars to me, which is a turn-based strategy game. Um, it's a tactical strategy game, I guess you'd call it, for Game Boy Advanced, I think, primarily. Um, it's interesting the difference between tactics and strategy. Sometimes it's just the difference between are you controlling individual characters or are you controlling, like, armies. But in Advanced Wars, you're controlling armies, but it's a very similar idea where... Okay, get out of... Get, get, get out of this. Where you have to... Okay. Where you have to, like, pick how far you're going to move and then pick what kind of attack to do. Like, the, it's very similar to this, except you just have armies instead of individuals. Okay. Uh, let's let's try an attack. Let's do an indirect attack. Throw a stone. Are you kidding me? I can like throw it at this guy's feet. All right, let's do it. Why not? I gotta do something. I'm not doing anything in these fights. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone there's like, oh, oh shit, back off! He's got stones. One step closer and I'll hit you with it. I swear. Okay, he, he's talking to me. Nowhere in real life do people in fights talk to each other as much as they do in Japanese media. In Japanese games, shows, movies, everything. The villain and the heroes are always having these big, like, back-and-forth dialogues. This does not happen in real life. Or in any Americanized media. I don't know what... Maybe Canadian media falls somewhere in the middle. I think it's more Americanized than anything. Whoa, two misses guy knows how to fight let's get let's try and sneak up behind him and see if we can do like double damage because if i know anything about these tactical games attacking someone from behind should be highly effective but we will see an interesting thing about this game that's oh he's attacking from behind he's got the right idea he spanked that guy in the butt um an interesting oh and he's also attacking from behind okay so attacking from behind is totally a thing but now they both got the behind. What are we supposed to do? Bunch of kids, a chicken man, impossible. <laughs> Wait, who's a chicken? Oh, the bird guy. I got it. I guess it's... Oh my god. I was going to say attacking from behind like the guy did in the intro movie is totally effective. Guys, I didn't even... I couldn't even throw a rock in time. I'm, I'm doing nothing in these fights. I might as well be watching a cutscene. This is insane how much I'm doing nothing. The computer did everything. I couldn't even get to a guy fast enough to attack him. I'm getting more trophies and stuff. I don't even deserve it. I'm literally not doing anything. Now we're all having a festive meal to celebrate my amazing skill. De they're impressed with denim. Denim did you shit in that fight. Denim wore some sweet denim. He showed off his glutes in a very stylish set of jeans. But he didn't actually fight, he threw a rock. I guess that intimidated them into defeat. But Denim is useless. Okay, now, now they're continuing to talk. One of the other interesting things about this game is it apparently has a, uh, uh, what you call it, alignment system. So if you're familiar with the old, the, you know, the granddaddy of all RPGs is Dungeons and Dragons. And there they originated an alignment system where your characters could be like lawful, they could be neutral, they could be chaotic, they could be evil, and so on. And this is sort of a, your character's personal philosophies and like their, their outlook on life. So like a lawful character couldn't just murder someone because it was convenient, but a chaotic character could. Um, and I always found that to be a super interesting element of Dungeons and Dragons. It's an element of that modern RPGs have kind of forgotten about. 
A lot of modern RPGs are based on a karma system of some kind where you can kind of do whatever you want. You can choose to kill a peasant or not, and the actions you choose will sort of ref determine your alignment. So you may eventually show up as like a good guy because you've done lots of good actions. And that's okay. That's actually a fine way of doing it too, but there's something interesting about doing it the other way around where you accept an alignment going in, then you as a player have to, you know, hold up that end of your character. You have to you have to reflect your character. Okay, we don't know how to enter a name, so we're just gonna Oh oh my god! Wait, 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 you have to press a button to bring up letters? Why wouldn't it just always be there? Somebody's gonna be named Jay. I don't think it's us. I don't know what we're answering a question to, but the name is Jay. Yes. Jay, that is a nice name. I expect much from you. Now, I want you to go to town called Krizzer, Knights, blah, 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 stronger than we thought. I want you to go blah, 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 blah. You don't have to tell me all this info, Pops. I have an idea that basically what your mission involves is showing up to a place, fighting a bunch of guys, getting experience, and killing the leader. I, uh... I have a hunch that that's how things work in this universe. But there's something interesting about the idea of accepting an alignment and then having to live within that, within a game. And this game, I believe, has lawful, neutral, and chaotic. Uh, would you like Hicks to join your army? Sure. Uh, okay. And take McNeil, too. Why don't I will accept Barkley. We're just going to take them all and Tyrone. Jeez, Patricia as well. How many applicants are there? Julia. Sure, Julia, come on in. Fast and under... Oh, I thought it said underwear. She's fast and wears underwear. Well, then you, you're welcome in this army. It says fast and underwater. How many people are allowed in? Oh my god. Should we have said no to some people? We kind of have no standards in this army. We're like, you want to fight? Come on in. We can always use bodies. If nothing else, you'll distract the enemy from me. And Jay doesn't like to get hit about no, <laughs> about the face with a sword. So you can take it for him. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. I think gamers have been trained to skip most dialogue because most dialogue is so superfluous. I, you know, a game should really develop, should figure out how to develop really, really useful dialogue, useful and interesting. And then maybe things will change. But a lot of this dialogue is just useless. I'm going to go on the record and say it. Uh, although, I guess I should have paid attention to the dialogue because I have nowhere, no idea where to go. Uh, before you get into battle, you have to choose which characters to dispatch. Your attack team, 10 characters. Okay. So. Uh. Okay. Uh. Okay. Ah, here we go. Let's just bring them all in. McNeil, Barkley, we're gonna make a big line. Here's the strategy, boys. When I say go, bum rush them. Everybody run for the leader. Uh, okay, that's fine. You can't get out of this mode since you're in an emergency battle situation. Okay. Okay. I can't add any more people. We got nine people. Guys, this is a strategy. When I say go, rush him. You rush you rush him and you, you clot the eyes and face and mouth of the leader. No mercy. And pickpocket him too. I found good things in people's pockets. Nobody pickpocketed me though. I bring up the rear. I do the pickpocketing, I do not get pickpocketed. <laughs> Um, the only downside to the alignment system, by the way, is I feel like there's a lot of confusion about, like, what chaotic and evil mean. I think chaotic... Like, chaotic neutral, I think, is, like, Han Solo, but chaotic lawful is actually someone you wouldn't necessarily expect. Because there's, like, lawful good, lawful neutral, lawful evil. I forget all the differences. There's some interesting charts online you can find that show what a lawful evil and a chaotic good character would be. It's actually pretty interesting. It's interesting to think of alignments and like, what would your personal alignment be? I have no idea what I would be. I, I think in RPGs, I didn't play them very much as a kid, but you know, to the degree I once in a while played them with friends, I would generally be neutral. I guess because I liked to, I didn't want to necessarily commit one way or the other. 
But I think these days, knowing that, like, Han Solo is, like, chaotic and so on, I might be, like, chaotic. Because I kind of, I like the idea of, like, a rogue-like character um, a little more than anything else. It's funny, for this game, I've had a chance to just talk to you guys while it plays itself. Like, <laughs> this is such a, such an interesting idea, or not an interesting idea for a game, but such an interesting game because, like, oh, we get to move. Good. Okay. Because, like, there is a lot of tutorial going on here. Oh, God. And you know what I really hate, actually? I'll tell you in a second. Let's attack someone. We finally get to attack. Yes. Uh, this guy's not on my team, right? Let's do it. Kill him. Yeah. Ooh, got an arrow to the side of the face, bud. It's interesting how you're an experience without actually killing people. Okay, one thing I hate about this game, you have to press... Okay, if you press X, it brings up the guy's info. You have to press circle to give him a command. Then you don't press circle here. Now you have to press X. And then it gives you the damn tutorial information again. Set the designation of the character. I know, I just clicked move. And I understand blue means move. The blue squares are when you're allowing me to move. Brown is when you want me to attack. There's some pit there. They'll keep running in. Set the de and then it tells me about setting the direction. I know. I don't want that information again. Again, now my instinct is to press circle here. But no, it's X to select this. X to select this. It's kind of... A very sloppy set of button layouts, I gotta say. And I can do without the constant tutorial reminders of the commands. Whoa! She shot an arrow above another dude and it landed on top of the head of a, a, a third dude. Or a second dude. That's crazy. Oh, nope. Oh my god. Okay, do this, do this. Okay, we do this. Here we go, we're learning the tactics. Wait! I thought I had a different person selected. So. Interesting. Okay, well, we'll do her. Indirect. Okay. I imagine the more you play this, the faster you get at these button things. Like, you probably just memorize. Whoa, he, he blocked an arrow? I guess never late, never too late to start. He suffered two arrows to the face before he thought, you know what? I'm going to block this one. I, I've had a rough day. I kind of don't want yet another arrow to the face. So... Here you go, buddy. You're gonna get one to the face. Point blank range. Oh! I think that should have killed you. I think an arrow to the face at point blank range does not do you good. Okay, what are we gonna do? Get her. Her. Okay. She's gonna try and get him kind of from the side slash the back. Direct. Oh, she only got a stone, though. Oh, well. You work with what you got. It's interesting how, like, every character has a distance attack. Huh. She's just... She didn't even have a weapon. Honestly, she's she's not really a soldier as much as she is just, like, someone who wanted to get out of the house for a day. She's like, ah, I've just been cooped up in here so long. I'm going to go fight in the Resistance for a little bit. See what it's like. See how the other half lives. What do you got? Stone as well. Well, we'll take it can't all be warrior queens that's for sure we need some foot soldiers one damage get out of my army you're fired it would suck to be fired from a volunteer fantasy army it's like you know what <laughs> i mean being fired from any volunteer position actually is really crappy when you think about it that's like saying you're so bad that we don't even want you here for free just leave we're just you know, even, even though it costs us absolutely nothing to have you here, you're more of a hindrance than a help. And that's what you are, sir, with your two damage. You, you all disappoint me. It's up to me to show everyone how it's done. Okay, this is our man, Denim. And somebody out there is named Jay. I forget who we named, or I don't even know who we named, to be totally honest. But a Jay exists. Denim sucks, too. He's also got a stone. Where are you getting all these stones, people? I do not know. Right to the base. Ooh, there you go. 77 experience. Holy crap. People are getting like two, three. That dude is worth 77. What do you have to do? That guy had his, like, 
masters in being a henchman. He was like a very established henchman. He had like earned lots of money and respect over the years. 77 experience. My god. It's like the diamond in the rough of henchmen. <laughs> Get him in the face. Hey, Barkley. At the bottom it says their names. Barkley attacks Serge. <laughs> I like how we have this like epic heroic music. Really, for what is essentially just like a bit of a brawl in a, in a grassy field. It's just some people throwing rocks at each other. <laughs> and, uh, you know, whoa, lighting each other on fire. I guess that is something. I wonder if it would be, uh, or I wonder if uh, it's a thing where you can uh, hear epic music while you fight. If that is a, a real disorder or something. That would be hilarious if it was somehow. I was diagnosed with epic music syndrome. Whenever I get into a bar fight, I hear epic music and it in induces me to fight. I can't not fight when I hear it. Okay. I guess when they get attacked, they defend themselves, which is kind of cool. There's also a good mix of gender here. The evil army includes both males and females, and so do we. We should have been really sexist about it. We should have taken like all the females and none of the males, or vice versa. So if we took all the males, it'd be like Jay's thugs. And if we took all the females, it'd be like Jay's angels. It'd be like a Charlie's angels kind of thing. Denim can be Bosley. Heal! Yay! So the one thing I will say about this game is that combat is pretty slow. I mean, we're going through like a pretty simple fight here, and it is taking its time. And she's running away. She's like, I don't want to get hit in the face with any rocks. And I saw what you get did to the guy with the master's degree. Well, guess what? We are on to you too. Uh, so the designation. Okay. What did I get? 250 goth! This will be added to your war fund. Yes. You know, if I, if I was that dude, I wouldn't tell anyone else in the battlefield I found that. I'd be like, that's nah, empty. Didn't seem to be full of anything, so... I just gotta run to my car real quick before the next battle. I'll uh, be right back. Boom! Oh, and I missed Dorothy was her name. Well... Okay, how about uh, Faye here? Tries to give Dorothy the old one-two stone to the face. I hear that's pretty effective. Action. Oh, what items does she have? She has nothing of interest. Okay. Are we supposed to be attacking the leader, by the way? I wasn't really paying attention. We probably could end this faster if we focused on the leader. Let's do that. Ooh, in fact, we can get right up and we can slap them. I mean, my whole plan, I told them to bum rush the leader. I don't know why I didn't stick to that. All right, here you go, buddy. Taste your own medicine. Yeah, sword to the side. Oh, God, but his bark is worse than my bite. That's for sure. Okay. This guy. Well, you know what? The leader's probably going to kill a couple of you guys, but you're cannon fodder anyway. Time for you to earn your keep, boy. Oh! Oh, God! <laughs> He's literally gonna kill my guys in like two hits each. I guess I should be using some ogre tactics and figuring out a way to kill the leader by taking minimal casualties, but it's okay. I'm not gonna do that. That's not how I roll. What did she find? Uh, inside the bag is the leather? It will be... What do you mean, the leather? And why is leather in quotes? Is it like an S&M outfit or something? It's a gimp suit. It's a leather gimp suit. We'll just call it the leather. Wink, wink. Keep attacking this guy. Because we must end this fight. We don't want to die here. It's so embarrassing to die in a grassy field during the rain. We've been fighting so long it's raining. That is a sign that not very effective fighters. Okay, let's just 
We're gonna do this one face to face. Get an attacker. Right in the face. 20! Boom! And you missed. Okay. Who hasn't gone yet? Is this guy gone? Nope. Okay, uh. Oh, there's a dude right there? It's a bad dude right there. Okay. Well, let's attack him. It's funny how you can, like, kind of not notice these guys. They kind of blend into the surroundings. I mean, there's so many of us. Okay. Really? This, my main guy needs to get over here and start wailing on this wizard so we can end this. End this foolishness. Although he's only armed with a stone, which I do not think is very effective. Oh, stone to the side of the face. 28 experience! Holy crap, he leveled up! That's, that's gotta be some stone throw to level up from whipping a stone to someone's face. Um, I've already said about this game how it was groundbreaking at in its time for basically introducing um, a sort of non-linear plots. Uh, what else did it introduce? Well, it didn't introduce, but included the alignment system and so on. It was also heralded for having really good tactical controls. And so I've been making fun of these battle scenes a little bit, but I will say that the combat in this is actually pretty cool. Most RPGs line your characters up on one side of the screen and the enemies on the other, and you take turns just picking what attack to do on the opponent. But this one, there's actually far more depth to it. You have to decide who's going to move where and when, and there's sort of a there, there's a real you know grid to the battlefield. It's almost like I, I think, in fact, even one review I read said it was sort of like chess in a way, where it mixed chess with RPGs. And I guess that's something that hadn't been done as much before. And so it really made this game stand out. And it really made me think that, you know, when it comes to games being successful, not every game has to be successful or innovative by creating something totally new. There's a lot of value in taking things that already exist and just bringing them together. So, you know, Blizzard is a company that I think has has done this really successfully. Blizzard, you know, they didn't create the real-time strategy genre. They didn't create the MMORPG. They didn't create a lot of the, the things that they're really known for. What Blizzard is really good at doing, though, is taking a concept like real-time strategy and perfecting it. So, like, the real-time strategy genre really kind of came out of, I think, Dune 2, and there were some predecessors before that, like Mule or... Um, there's another game that I'm totally forgetting the name of. Uh, Hirschvig Zenig or something. I don't know. That's not the name, but it's something like that. But, so Blizzard, you know, Entertainment, the, the company that made Warcraft and Starcraft and stuff, they didn't invent the real-time strategy game. But they really honed what real-time strategy meant, and they ended up creating some of the best games. And I think, in a, in a way, this game has a similar place in kind of RPG history, where, like, it didn't necessarily create uh, oops it didn't necessarily create all the things that, that make an RPG an RPG but it did hone a lot of them in ways that had not been done before and I believe that's why this game is in the book Thousand One Games was played before you die and I, I think there's value there I, I am shocked at how long these battles are taking I think realistically you know, I was worried we wouldn't get very far in this game I mean, really, we're probably going to have to call it after this battle. I mean, there's only... You know, I can only devote so much time to each game. And in really long games like this, these are going to be really hard to deal with. You know what I'm curious? Would you guys have liked to see me get farther in this game? Or do you feel like you just like tuning in each week and seeing me check a game out? And this gives you a real sense of a game. And you don't really necessarily need me to go much farther. Like, what do you guys prefer? If it's the case that people would really like to see me get farther in some of these games, then I'll figure out a way to do it. But, you know, from my from my own experience, I, I kind of feel like for a game like this, I'm, I'm running out of things to talk about in a weird way. Or not in a weird way, but understandably so. And, you know, even if I were to play this game for another, like, two hours, I don't think I would get too much farther than I've already gotten. 
So, I mean, that's my own kind of feeling of the situation, but you know, I'm open to, to knowing what you guys think. So, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Always excited to hear from you. I love it when I get that little uh, notification that someone has commented on your video. I mean, I also love when people like the video or... Um, you know what I've been liking recently is subscribers. There was a point months and months ago when I thought... When I uh, was sort of more starting out and I hadn't gotten any new subscribers for like a whole week or two. And I sort of started to feel like, man, I guess my channel's just never really going to grow to a certain point, you know? But all of a sudden... Uh, things started to change and you know hey I know the biggest channel out there I know it but we've had this sort of slow steady influx of more and more people who are curious about this little mission I'm on who like to tune in each week and see these videos and yeah I'm, I'm really liking having you guys all tune in for this stuff it really motivates me to keep going um, and I think you know we've started to run out of stuff to say about a game when I'm literally just talking about the meta issues like about making a she got 18 experience for that about making videos it'd be funny if like a farmer showed up and he's like what are you kids doing in my field get out of here and he just chased us all away because we do not look like hardened soldiers or anything we we literally look like children like look how cute this guy looks he looks like a little boy who's in his pajamas who's just playing uh, before his mom makes him come in for the day and do his homework he does not look like a man doesn't look like he has hair on his chest. Uh, we, we have no targets, so I guess uh, just wait. Do nothing. You got off light, buddy. Okay. This guy will go over here. I guess you can fall in these pits and they don't really do anything. We're, we're totally, we're bum rushing this, this wizard. I don't know if this is the right strategy, but feels like in a fight you want to bum rush the most powerful guy. You have 15 experience for that. Jesus. Vice. He's covering up our rear. I wonder if any of you guys out there have played this for the Sega Saturn. That's one system that I haven't really done much with. I, you know what? Maybe I should have played this on the Sega Saturn. Rather than going with the PlayStation version of this. Maybe I should have done the Sega Saturn. I should definitely keep an eye out for that in future because I want to make sure we're getting a variety of systems here. I suspect the Sega Saturn, oh my god, the grass is changing. It looks like it's autumn now. We've been fighting for like a month, like in game time. It's like seasons have come and gone. People are aged. When this fight began, I was a young man. Now I'm old and unloved. Too experience. They're fleeing. Hello. Arrow to the butt does not help anything. Swan attack Tyrone. Swan, you leave my boys alone. You do not get to start trouble with them. It will make your life very unpleasant. Also, I feel like most of my dudes are really ineffective in combat. Like, how much damage is this guy really going to do to Dorothy? He threw a rock and missed. She has like 40 hit points. He does like one damage to her when he attacks. She does one damage to him when she attacks. Combat is gonna take forever. It's crazy. Okay. He's like, oh, Dorothy. Well, I guess I will attack you to your face. Ah! Psych. I was pretending not to notice you, but I noticed you. And take it. Ah, oh, wow. They, they miss each other. A cacophony of failure. Or a symphony of failure or something. Obstacles. <sighs> We're going to be here for a while, guys. Settle in. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I've been fighting so long, I don't even remember what we're fighting over. This, this feels like the level that a fight should be at for like a boss fight or something not just like a random fight between this is like my first solo fight they're like we think you're ready to fight by yourself we're not gonna we're not gonna rush you you, can, you have full control over everyone and you're gonna suck it's gonna suck for you okay well he's gonna move over here we're gonna br start bringing up the rear on this dude see what we can do about pincering 
Pinteringham. Four damage. Aruba. Okay. Denim. Denim, dude. If there's anything that you could do, man, it would really be appreciated. I'm probably playing this totally wrong. It's probably like, oh man, just cast a freaking wind spell! Okay. Actually, you know, one thing I've totally been ignoring is the, like, wind water thing. Like, I should be looking at what elemental I am and what elemental different enemies are and pairing people up. That's probably what I'm doing wrong. That's probably why people are causing, like, no damage. Dear God, Denim is about to die. But so's the bad guy. Ah, we're so close! I think one rock, one good rock to the side of the head could end it all. Okay. Okay. It's all up to Patricia. She's been training for this moment. She's got her lucky stone. It's the red one she found by the river. She's getting a drink of water in the morning. She throws it. Lucky red stone! Misses. Okay. Now it's all up to Eileen. She's been training for this. Dreaming about this. She's been having fantasies about this moment. She's the one who's going to end it all. She's got her lucky stone, also red. And I throw it right at the leader's face. Gives a little kiss for good luck. And lets it fly. Yeah! One damage! Oh my god. Okay. Now it's all up to Barkley. Barkley's been training for this moment. Fantasizing about it. He is ready. He runs up. He, he trips in a pit, but crawls out. Gets up. Looks at the enemy. Gets out his lucky... Should we have him throw a stone too? No, no. We'll have him attack. What the hell is tower? Uh, okay, he's going to do a tower attack. It's an attack he's been practicing with his brother. It's a wrestling move. Here he goes. And he misses. You suck, Barkley. Is there anyone left? I don't think there's anyone left to attack. He's totally going to kill one of us. Are you going to kill Denim? Yeah. Denim is dead. Or very close to it. Nope. Denim died. We... We... Are you kidding me? We died? He had like one hit point left! That took like 40 minutes! Oh my god. Alright, well, I was wondering if we would end after that battle, and I guess we're going to, because we just failed the whole game. <laughs> wow, alright. Well, Tactics Ogre, I think we've learned that classic games are freaking tough. You know, they talk about, you know, old games, you only had three lives and one continue, and that was it, no checkpoints. Well... Even when they were, you know, ports from Famicom games to the PlayStation, the PlayStation 1, they were still pretty brutal. Uh, I am I'm shocked that I failed. I did not fail intentionally, guys. I thought I would get past the first fight, but I really screwed that up. I was I was lured into this sense of, like, how could you fail at the first fight? I didn't think I would fail. Oh, my God. All right, well, I mean, I guess that gives us a nice place to end. So pros and cons. The pros of this game are that it is, uh, I think, a better type of RPG, or not a better type, but a more interesting type than some of the more traditional Japanese RPGs, where they're essentially just lining people up, your good guys on one side, the bad guys on the other side, you take turns picking the attack on which, which player and so on. Those games are fun and they have certain levels of strategy, but it's interesting to mix it up, and with Tactics Ogre, you actually get to move people around a battlefield and make decisions about, like, pincering and moving in groups and stuff. I obviously wasn't paying enough details to the, the tactical information about each player to really take advantage and I failed in my first fight, but I could see, I know there was stuff I wasn't paying super close attention to, and I could see the tactics in there. So this is a game that I could see getting very interesting, especially if you get past later fights and you get experience and you level guys up and get them cool items and armor. I mean, that's the best part of every RPG is decking your guys out and building something. RPGs have this very, like, building uh, component to them. That's what makes them great. And so, you know, had we got to experience any of that, I, I could see it'd be really cool. I mean, look at all the variety here. There's dragons, and, oh, he just slapped her for no reason. Ah, they're telling you the different classes and stuff. So there's there's lots to go on, lots going on in this game, and it would have been interesting to see more, but, you know, hey, we can only do so much. <laughs> 
Um, the cons of this game, I will say that I'm not a fan of the menu system as much. Um, it is... It is dated, and it's kind of like overly... It, it tries to compensate to make things really, really easy by giving too much tutorial, and I find that's actually a little annoying at times. So I'm not a huge fan of the, the control system exactly, but you know what? That's probably something I could have gotten used to, so I don't know if it's a huge downside to the game. The game does have tons and tons and tons of story and stuff, and that was also a semi-downside, although it could kind of go in the middle because you do want a game that has depth and variety, and you do want a game that has good story. And maybe had I read the story, I would have found it much more interesting. But if you just want to pick this game up and play it, obviously there's so much... I like how they're just going around, one guy slapping the next, who's slapping the next. And he's like, skeleton, an undead character, a skeleton warrior, in fact. Since it is already dead, it can revive in time after its HP becomes zero. Actually, the dialogue and stuff is kind of funny. Because it is sort of totally, you can totally tell it was translated from Japan. The English is kind of broken a little bit, and things are phrased a little odd. I think that adds a bit of Japanese charm to it, though, if you ask me. The, the, I wonder what the octopus is going to say about itself. But anyway, yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, if you're not into RPGs, you probably won't have the patience for this game. But that said, it does strike me as there's a lot, gonna, a lot going on here, and it would be interesting to kind of follow it up and, and see where this goes. So, is this a game you should play before you die? I would say yeah. I mean, unless this is really not your type of game, then of course, as always, you can skip it. But it does seem like if you're into RPGs, you may be interested in this one. And I believe you can get it for PSP these days and on the PlayStation Network, potentially. Don't quote me on that last one, but I believe the PSP can get it. So, you know, look for it. You can find it. And it's probably worth checking out. Guys, if you have liked this video, uh, give me a like, give me a subscribe, because we'll be back in a couple days with a new video and a new game, and you don't want to miss out. Until I see you again, though, take care of yourselves, and peace. Okay. What am, what am I going to say before I, before I run away? Okay. Can I turn around? Uh, let's see. Uh, guys, remember to uh, face the enemy directly before you swing your sword, or you won't do any damage. Yeah. Now I run off.